Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I just want to make sure that my clicker works while folks are filing in. OK, it works. Um, so it, it's great to see everyone. Uh, I feel very fortunate uh, to be here speaking with you today. I also feel very fortunate that I was able to give the presentation right after the bathroom break so folks have energy um, and are, are feeling good. Um, I was allotted 15 minutes, but I'm going to keep my presentation to 10 in case folks have uh, questions. Um, so uh, like, uh, I'm just going to um, show you a quick agenda. So. Uh, I'll introduce myself and my organization. I'm going to talk about a different kind of way to use light in New York City. I, we recognize that this event has been largely about green spaces and making New York City a, a livable place in terms of access to sunlight for, uh, for human beings and just that, that actual exposure to our skin um, and all of that. And that's amazing and that's great. Um, there's also other ways that you can uh, use sunlight, um, specifically generating clean electricity. Um, so I'm going to be talking a little bit about um, solar electricity in New York City, some challenges to installing solar in New York City, some of the creative solutions uh, that are being used to bring solar power to our city. Um, then I'm going to give a few case studies, and I have a short public service announcement about a new law that is going into effect related to solar power. So my organization, Solar SolarOne, uh, we're a nonprofit organization uh, that was founded about 15 years ago here in the city with the goal of empowering all New Yorkers to play a role in our transition to clean energy. Um, we have three major programs uh, that focus on environmental education in the public school system. We have a workforce training program with a lab in Long Island City where we train folks in the skills that they need to get jobs in construction, building operations and maintenance, and solar installation. And then we have another program called Here Come Solar, um, which is the program that I manage. And that works with building owners and community groups to help them get solar installed. Um, before I dive into that, I just want to share a little bit of sort of Solar One's founding story, which is uh, it, it was a sort of a quintessential New York City fight for light. Um, so the, about 15, 20 years ago, there was a strip of land on the East River between 18th Street and 23rd Street that was owned by the city's Economic Development Corporation. And there was a plan for high-rise luxury condos to go in. Um, there was a group of neighborhood residents who didn't really want high-rise luxury condos to go in and, and to close off access to the waterfront. They wanted a public space. Um, and those residents organized, those residents won. And rather than that land being turned over to the Parks Department, uh, Solar One was created to be a steward for the park and uh, entered into a long-term lease with the city's Economic Development Corporation for that park, which is now known as Stuyvesant Cove Park. Um, it's beautiful. I definitely recommend that you check it out. Uh, it's between 18th and 23rd on the East River. Um, so that's how we started. Uh, we've evolved a lot. Um, we have, uh, like I mentioned, those three major programs, and we have 40 full-time staff that are working around the city. Um, so I'm, now I'm going to talk about solar. Um, we launched our Here Comes Solar program in 2014, so it's our newest program. Um, and it's really about making the benefits of clean energy accessible to everyone. So if you look at what's happening nationally and regionally, uh, solar is really taking off. More and more folks are installing it. But solar wasn't happening in the same way in New York City, particularly in low-income communities. Um, so we started a program that, that basically uh, intervenes in the market and helps bring solar in uh, to those underserved communities. We've got four major focus areas. A lot of our work's with affordable housing. Um, we also work on community solar, which is uh, solar for renters. Um, and uh, we do work with market rate multifamily buildings too, co-ops and condos. Um, and last but not least, we have a program that's deploying solar with battery backup for community facilities, um, particularly in areas that were hit by Superstorm Sandy. This is a quick overview of our model. Um, so essentially, this is what our staff does all day, every day. Um, we do solar feasibility assessments. Uh, we consult with building owners and community groups about if they can go solar, how they can pay for it, what incentives are available. Um, and then when they're ready to move forward with a, a project, we run a request for proposals on their behalf, help them get bids from local contractors, help them pick a company to work with, and uh, then are, are there as a consumer advocate through the installation process. Um, this is the slide where I brag about our impact. Um, I'll keep it brief. Uh, we're 
we're proud of our impact. Uh, we've helped a lot of uh, New Yorkers get solar. Um, we're up to about $50 million that we've helped um, basically develop uh, of solar projects, primarily um, on affordable housing and in low-income communities, but essentially all here in New York City. Um, so we're growing a lot. Um, I just want to talk about why this matters. Why do we care about solar power? Um, well, some of this stuff is intuitive and you know, I should recognize this audience, you guys probably know a lot of this as well, so I'll keep it brief. Um, but solar power does not emit any air pollution. So uh, you can generate electricity without uh, negatively contributing to public health. So that's really important. Um, another reason that solar power is important for the city is that it reduces greenhouse gas emissions. It's not uh, emitting any um, CO2, um, so helping to mitigate uh, climate change. Another one is that it helps alleviate strain on our electric distribution system. So we use a lot of power here in the city, and Con Edison has to work really hard to get all that power to us. If we have more distributed generation, meaning you know little power plants, uh, ideally clean energy power plants, that are sited right on top of the buildings that are consuming that electricity, it relieves strain on the wires and helps us get more out of our infrastructure. Um, obviously, it reduces utility bills for the folks that are benefiting from that solar project, which is really important. Um, and it creates green jobs uh, and supports the e economic development here in our city. So like many things in New York City, uh, there are challenges. Um, just to name a few, we have a, a complex building stock, right? Uh, if you look at most parts of the country, you have essentially low-rise commercial buildings and suburban cookie cutter homes with pitched roofs. That's not New York City. Um, our building stock is complicated, our buildings are tall, we've got a lot of stuff on the roof, um, and that all makes for challenges. Um, in part, because of our complicated building stock, we have a complicated permitting process. Um, and then this is a barrier which is fairly universal, um, and that's the upfront cost. So the cost of solar technology has come way down in the last decade. Um, but it's still expensive. Uh, for a multifamily building, it could still be a six-figure investment. And particularly for affordable housing, that's a real challenge. Um, and then the incentives that are available, there are a lot of really great incentives for solar, but the majority of those incentives are tax incentives. So if you're a nonprofit organization, like a church or like my organization, or you're an affordable housing development that doesn't pay income taxes or property taxes, uh, it's hard to directly benefit from those incentives. And these are some of the solutions that we use through our program uh, to address those barriers. So we provide technical assistance to building owners. Um, we forge community partnerships so that we can really have more of an impact um, you know, in the communities that we prioritize and want to serve. Um, we organize purchasing groups so that people can uh, go th get solar along with their neighbors and get a better price because of that. Um, we help to arrange financing options to up overcome that upfront cost barrier. Um, we help integrate solar into broader building retrofits. And then last but not least, we help bring community solar to our city so that renters like myself can benefit from solar too. Um, so now I'm gonna talk about a few projects that we've worked on over the last few years that we're proud of. Um, the first is Solar Uptown Now. Um, this was America's first successful multifamily affordable housing group purchasing campaign. Um, this was led by We Act for Environmental Justice, which is a fabulous uh, partner of ours uh, that does work, uh, broad work in northern Manhattan, um, advocating for environmental justice for residents. Um, we also worked with the Urban Homesteading Assistance Board, which specifically works with affordable housing co-ops citywide. Um, and we were able to get 11 affordable housing co-ops to decide to go solar at the same time. Um, it all, all in was about $1 million worth of solar construction. Um, we got great pricing from the contractor for that project. And because the, it was a big job for the contractor, um, not only did they give good pricing, they agreed to hire, hire five graduates of our worker training program for full-time jobs installing solar. Um, that photo is uh, of a gentleman by the name of James Bailey who came through our training program. Uh, that's him carrying a solar panel uh, for a building actually not so far from here on 110th Street, an affordable housing co-op. Um, we work with city agencies as well. Um, we work with uh, the city's uh, Department of Housing Preservation and Development, or HPD, um, to help them integrate solar across affordable housing that's participating in city programs. Um, so again, solar doesn't just protect the environment. Um, it can also protect 
the long-term sustainability of affordable housing by reducing operating expenses. Um, we provide procurement assistance. We've done it for about 54 buildings that have come through their program so far, um, and we're hoping to scale that up. Um, we're also helping HPD figure out how they can screen every single building that comes to the city for a loan um, to see if it's a good candidate for solar um, and promote that opportunity. So next, I'm gonna talk about a few community solar projects. Um, so community solar is a relatively new model, uh, and it's, a, it's the idea behind community solar, the diagram makes it look complicated, but it's kind of simple. You put a bunch of solar onto one roof, and then you send the credits that it generates, those energy credits, to a bunch of different utility customers. Um, so there are a lot of benefits to doing this, and um, probably the biggest is, is access. So as a renter, there was no way that I or two-thirds of New Yorkers were ever gonna be able to directly benefit from solar power, because we can't put it on our own roof. Um, but with community solar, uh, that's completely changed. Um, I personally subscribe to a community solar project that's on a warehouse in Brooklyn. Um, and uh, the way that the model works is that a big solar project goes on one roof and sends electricity to the grid. Um, Con Edison measures that power, um, accounts for it, and then distributes it onto folks' bills. Um, so this is, a, you know, for us, a really exciting new development. Um, and we think that it, it really um, expands what's possible with solar in our city. Um, and I have two projects that I want to highlight um, that we're working on um, in partnership with other organizations to uh, really maximize the impact of local community solar projects. So one of them is Sunset Park Solar and the other is Community Power. Um, Sunset Park Solar is a community shared solar project that is going to be installed on the roof of the Brooklyn Army Terminal in Brooklyn. Um, in Sunset Park, it's uh, about 700 kilowatts of solar, a $2 million project. It's gonna serve about 200 families in the Sunset Park neighborhood. Um, the system is gonna have a, it's gonna be cooperatively owned by the residents who sign up to participate in the project. Um, and the solar installation company that we're working with has agreed to hire six graduates of our training program to work on the installation itself. Um, that project is really being spearheaded by UPROSE, which is an environmental justice organization uh, that serves the Sunset Park community, um, and we're really glad to be their technical assistance partner, um, along with Co-op Power that's financing the project. Um, and I should definitely um, acknowledge the city's key role in this project, because the city's Economic Development Corporation actually made their roof available, and they said, who wants to develop solar on this public rooftop for the benefit of the community. Um, so we put together a team, uh, responded to their request for proposals, and ultimately were selected to do the, the project. Community power is similar, um, that it's community shared solar um, on public rooftops. Um, it's actually on public housing rooftops. Um, there are three different NYCHA developments that'll be hosting solar, including the Carver houses, which are about five blocks, or not even, uh, two blocks east of here. Um, and then two developments in, in Brooklyn, one uh, being the Glenwood Houses in uh, Canarsie, another being the Kingsborough Houses in sort of the Bed-Stuy Crown Heights border. Um, and that project is gonna be delivering utility bill savings to 350 low-income families. Um, it, we're gonna be providing paid apprenticeships to 15 NYCHA residents installing those systems. Um, and that project is only possible uh, because of strong support from the utility um, from Con Edison. Um, so these are some examples of the community solar projects that we're working on. Um, I promised I was going to be quick, and apparently I've used up all of my time. So I'm going to make this PSA very quick, um, which is that in April, the city passed the Climate Mobilization Act, which is a series of local laws. Two of those local laws create a mandate for solar or green roofs on all new construction buildings here in the city. So if you're an architect, you're a developer, you're looking to build something, um, you know, Google it um, or contact us. Uh, the bulletin, the Department of Buildings actually just published the rules um, for that, uh, for this, these local laws, um, and it's going to go into effect on November 15th. So um, we're going to see a lot more solar and green roofs happening because of that law. Um, I put a link to a website. Uh, the Building Energy Exchange has great resources about this new local law. Um, and that's my presentation. So if you're interested in solar um, or you want to learn more, my contact information is there, and you can also contact us through our website. Thanks so much.